Hello. In this video, we are going to calculate the boiling point of a specific solution, a solution formed by dissolving 50.00 grams of sodium chloride in 400 milliliters of water. Essentially, we're trying to determine the boiling point of a particular brine solution. Recall the formula that we need to use to find the new boiling point involves determining the change in the boiling point from pure water to what water would be with an electrolyte dissolved in it. We use the following formula that the change in the boiling point is equal to I, which we call the Van Hoff factor. We have the Kb, which is the boiling point elevation constant, sometimes called the ebulioscopic constant. And then M is the molality of the solution. So let's kind of go in reverse order, and we're going to determine the molality of this solution first. What we notice is that we shall calculate the uh, molar mass of sodium chloride and recall that all we need to do is look in the periodic table and look at the number underneath the relevant symbol so we notice that for sodium we see 22.9898 which tells us that one mole of sodium chloride weighs 22.9898 grams. Similarly, for chlorine, we see the number 35.4527, which tells us that one mole of chlorine atoms weighs 35.4527 grams. We add those values together and we get a total of 58.4425. And our units are grams per mole. So this tells us that one mole of sodium chloride weighs 58.4425 grams. So we can use this information to determine how many moles of sodium chloride are present in 50.00 grams. 00 grams of sodium chloride. And then we notice that one mole of sodium chloride has a mass of 58.4425 grams of sodium chloride. By multiplying through, we notice that the units of grams of sodium chloride cancel and we'll get an answer in terms of moles of sodium chloride, which is exactly what we want. And once we form that calculation, we see that we have 0 0.8555 moles of sodium chloride. You'll notice that for the preliminary calculations, I am carrying extra digits. At the end, at the very end of the problem, we can round to the proper number of significant digits. Now, the second part of the problem for uh, computing the molality, we need to know the mass of the solvent. And we're only told the volume of the solvent. This is an extremely common pattern in this type of problem. And it depends upon our remembering a very important fact about water, that it has a density around 25 degrees C's, almost exactly one gram per milliliter. So this is a very useful fact to remember because it comes up very often. And if you multiply through, we get that the mass of the solvent is going to be 400.0 grams of H2O. So that gives us the number of moles of the solute. It gives us the mass of the solvent. Therefore, we can use those data to calculate the molality of the solution.
we note that we have our 0 0.8555 moles of sodium chloride. And if they are dissolved in 400.0 grams of water. So that is our solvent. A useful method to convert this type of information to the molality makes use of the fact that we know that there are 1,000 grams of water, or 1,000 grams of anything, in one kilogram. If we perform this particular multiplication, among other things, we notice that the units of grams of H2O will cancel out, and we'll be left with 2.139 moles of sodium chloride in one kilogram of the solvent. But this is exactly the definition of molality. So this is a 2.139 mole solution of sodium chloride. So what we've done so far is to calculate the molality of the solution. But there are two other factors in our equation if we want to determine the change in the boiling point. The first of these particular values is this constant I. And this is called the Van Ta factor. To determine this particular value, we just recall that if we have a solid such as sodium chloride, when we dissolve it into water, it's going to break up completely. It's a strong electrolyte, and it's going to break up into one sodium ion plus one chloride ion. So that if we just think in terms of molecules of sodium chloride, which I assure you do not exist, but let's just assume for a second that those such a thing did exist. When it's dissolved in water, instead of acting as a single sodium chloride particle, it breaks up into two particles, a sodium ion and a chloride ion, each of which are independent. Because of that, since we get one plus one equals two for this particular dissolution, we know that the Van Ta factor is equal to two. We'll see later on that it's precisely by calculations of the change in the boiling point when we dissolve various ionic solids in water that actually proves to us that this idea that sodium chloride actually does break up into two different ions is actually experimentally verifiable. Anything that is not experimentally verifiable in science is meaningless. We can look in a table of values, you find the value of Kb, the boiling point elevation constant, or the ebulioscopic constant, if you like, for water, and we see that its value is going to be 0 0.512 degrees centigrade divided by molality. It's important to keep in mind is that the boiling point elevation constant refers to the solvent, not the solute. So you want to look in the table for Kb for water, not the Kb for sodium chloride. Important thing to keep, keep in mind. We already noticed that I is equal to two in our particular case. And we've also determined that the molality of the solution is 2.139 mole. Therefore, we'll remind ourselves one last time of the relevant formula that we're going to use, that the change in the boiling point is equal to I times Kb, the ebulioscopic constant, times M, the molality. So now it's a matter of plugging and chugging to the Van Ta factor is a unitless quantity. Ebulioscopic constant, degrees centigrade divided by molality, 
and then we multiply it by the molality, which is 2.139 mole. And once we perform that calculation, we get a value of 2.19 degrees centigrade. It's important at this point to remember that this is the change in the boiling point. It's not what the boiling point is. So we recall that the normal boiling point for H2O is 100 degrees centigrade. So we've determined that the boiling point will increase by 2.19 degrees. So that tells us that the new boiling point of this particular solution is going to be 100 degrees centigrade plus 2.19 degrees centigrade. So we get 102.19 degrees centigrade. And that is our final value there. So this particular solution we will find will have a boiling point of 102.19 degrees centigrade rather than the expected 100 degrees uh, centigrade that we would get for a completely pure solution of H2O. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.